Welcome in Christ Jesus, our Lord, those gathering here in person and those joining us also online. Today, as we worship our God and Savior, we're also going to introduce some parts of the new Wisconsin Synod hymnal, uh, which is also called Christian Worship. We have one sample copy that was sent to us. We have ordered other copies that should be arriving. As you see, it looks really nice on the outside, but we're going to be talking about what's on the inside today, introducing some of the liturgical music and uh, a hymn also to give you an idea of what's in there old and new things that we can join in praising our God. If you would take your service folder for a minute, I want to just walk through the service. The first hymn is a new hymn to most of us. The choir will sing the first two stanzas. We'll join in the third stanza. The order of service is pretty much as it would be in the new hymnal, the confession of sins. For the, on page three where it has Lord have mercy, this is intended that the minister and congregation could sing this responsibly. Today, the vicar and the choir will sing it responsibly. We'll listen to them sing it. That continues on to page five, where we will sing the glory to God in the highest. It is, we'll sing the refrain after the choir sings the verses. We're going to introduce this with you right now. Uh, if you turn to page five, there will be a little introduction. The choir will sing the refrain. And then we'll do it again. There'll be an introduction, and we'll all join in singing the refrain as Mark. So follow along on page five as the choir introduces this for us. So as we go through the service, we'll join in singing that refrain after the choir sings the verses. We continue the, the word, the prayer of the church, page six, the first lesson is normal. We have a hymn setting of the psalm of the day. Then after the second lesson, we have the gospel acclamation, bottom of page seven, which is what we used to call the prayer of the day. We're going to introduce this again also by actually going through it. So we're going to have the choir sing the refrain and the verse, and then we'll repeat the refrain after the choir sings the verse. We then continue, as usual, the gospel. The hymn of the day is uh, a new word set to an old melody, very familiar to us. One of the uh, added resources with our new hymnal, they're providing uh, settings for instruments to accompany many of the hymns, making it easier to do that. And so we're going to use what they call a modern ensemble for this hymn, uh, piano, flute, and bass guitar accompanying each of the stanzas with a little interlude between them. I think you'll find that a joyous way to be singing this familiar hymn. We continue with the service as usual, sermon, the confession of faith, next, day, next page, prayer of the church. And then uh, after the prayer of the church, the choir will sing through what would be the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei from the new order of service. If we were having a communion service, those would be things we would sing. Again, we'll take some time to learn this before we start learning these and, and using them in worship too. Uh, continuing, we have a closing prayer, the benediction, and then we fin finish off with the familiar hymn in Christ alone. God bless you richly as we hear his word. Today, in our lessons, we focus on Jesus, Jesus willing to give up his life, to be a servant, because he is our friend, the best friend we could ever have. We'll focus on his love, be filled with his love, so that we can love others too. 
We begin our worship then with the opening hymn focusing on that amazing love, how deep the Father's love for us. Again, the choir will sing the first two stanzas. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But with Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins, with his innocent suffering and death, Trusting in him, I pray. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your mercy and grace may always go before and follow after us, that loving you with undivided hearts 
we may be ready for every good and useful work. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 50. We read, The Sovereign Lord has given me a well-instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. Who will condemn me? It is the sovereign Lord who helps me. They, they will all wear out like a garment. The moths will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue with the psalm of the day. Our second lesson is taken from Peter's first epistle, chapter 4. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. This is the word of the Lord.
please stand in honor of the gospel. Our gospel appointed for today is Mark chapter 8. Jesus and his disciples went on to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll continue with the hymn of the day. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
The portion of God's word we'll look at in detail today is our gospel from St. Mark, chapter 8. Fellow disciples of Jesus, the Savior. When you get a bunch of strangers together at a party, there was a tradition to have some kind of game, some kind of activity to get everybody to get to know each other. You know, sometimes we call that a mixer activity. One activity that people used to do was to get the names, the list of the names of famous people and write one name on each piece of paper and then tape those papers to the back of everyone. But the trick was you didn't know whose name was on your back. And then other people would walk up, they'd look behind you, see who you are supposed to be, because you're supposed to be that person, and then they'd talk to you as if you were that person, as if you were Tom Brady, as if you were the governor of Ohio, as if you were whoever it was. And, and the trick was you were then supposed to guess who you were, that is, who the name was on the back of your, on your back. Well, imagine that you were at a party like that, and somebody had the name Jesus on their back. And now you had to talk to that person like you'd talk to Jesus. What would you say so that that person would get it? So that that person would understand that we're talking about Jesus? What would you say to someone about Jesus, someone who didn't know anything about Jesus at all? In our gospel today, Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he asks them, basically, what are people saying about me? And they give all sorts of different things that people were saying about him, so many of them wrong. And then Jesus told the truth. Jesus didn't just speak the truth, he lived the truth. That he is God. Not only some powerful God far away, he is the God who is right here with us. The God who loves us. The God who acts in our lives. The God who takes care of us day after day. The God who is our friend. Today we're going to talk about who is Jesus and recognize that Jesus is our friend, our loving friend, the best friend possible. And then stop and ask, what does a friend do? So our lesson starts out. Jesus and his disciples went to the villages around Caesarea Philippi. They were coming from Bethsaida. On the way, he asked them, who do people say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist was the one who had gone before Jesus to prepare the way. John was a fiery preacher. Today we'd say fire and brimstone preacher. John talked about people's sins. And he got very specific with what people were doing wrong, how they needed to stop it, how they needed to repent and turn to the Lord for forgiveness. And then he would baptize them, giving them that forgiveness. Was Jesus, John the Baptist, now going around and preaching about all the people's sins? A problem was, John was dead. He had been put to death by King Herod in his capricious attitude. And so there was no way that this could be John unless he had somehow come back from the dead to keep on working. But that's not who Jesus is. Just John the Baptist. Just a preacher of righteousness. Some said that he was Elijah. Elijah was the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. He had lived 800 years earlier. You remember some of the stories about Elijah. Elijah was the one who faced off against the prophets of Baal. The prophets of Baal had kind of taken over Israel. The king was going along with them. Elijah then challenged them. He said, okay, you hundreds of prophets of Baal, you make an altar, you put a sacrifice and, and a dead animal there on top of it, and then you call upon your God to send down fire and take up that sacrifice. Well, the prophets of Baal did that. They built an altar. They put a sacrifice on it. They cried out to Baal for hours, cutting themselves, and didn't get any response because... Baal isn't real. Then Elijah built an altar for the Lord, put a sacrifice on it. He poured water on it. He poured so much water on it, it poured over the sides and filled a trench around the, this altar. And then Elijah very simply asked the Lord to show himself to the people. And immediately fire came down from heaven, consumed the sacrifice, consumed the water, actually lick, it licked up the water all the way around the altar too. Elijah he had to preach to the king of his day, point out his sins, and then end up running for his own life. Later, though, Elijah was taken to heaven miraculously on chariots of fire. Was 
Jesus, Elijah, come back. Later on, the Jews would actually have a, a custom when they celebrated Passover. They'd leave an empty chair at their table for Elijah to return. Was that who Jesus was? No. Jesus was more than just a great prophet. Jesus was more than someone just calling people to repent. Jesus was the one who actually showed God's answer, who actually showed God's response. Well, what did the rest of the people think? What did the Jewish leaders think about Jesus? You read about that in the Gospels. They rejected him. Even when Jesus went around showing God's love and forgiveness, they said, who is this man to do such things? When he healed people, when he did miracles, they just cried out for more signs that he might offer on this earth. They rejected him because they viewed him as being a threat to their power. And many others, of course, just ignored him, like that Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, until Pilate had to deal with this Jesus there. In our day, people have different ideas of who Jesus is. It's always kind of interesting at Christmas time. That's when it seems like the, the country takes notice of this. And it used to be the magazines would have an article right on the front cover, Who is Jesus? Or the search for the real Jesus. And they'd give all sorts of ideas about who Jesus is with all sorts of scholars giving different claims. And it seems like they always skipped over the one source that could tell them, namely the Bible. People want to look anywhere else, it seems like, for some idea of who Jesus is. You know, you have to, you have to be careful about religious movies and TV shows because so often they aren't based on what the Bible says. Some of them even ignore the whole idea of God being out there. Some people say, yes, there was Jesus. Jesus, he's the one who tells you what you should do. He's the one who lays down the law so you can get right with God by what you do. Other people think Jesus is just a judge, especially hopefully a judge who's judging those other people out there and not really looking at what I have to do wrong. But I think most people, when they think of Jesus, especially with his birth at Christmas, think about Jesus as maybe having a red suit and a long beard and a bag full of toys. Jesus is the one who brings candy. Jesus is the one who makes us happy and never asks anything bad of any one of us. Other people may think that they just don't know who Jesus is because he's not right here. He's not standing here in front of me. So who is this Jesus? Who is he and where can we learn about who he is and what he has done? Well, Jesus doesn't leave us guessing as to who he is. He provides the answers written out for us in the Bible. Just read through one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Read about what Jesus said and what Jesus did. Because he made it so clear. He demonstrated it day after day. Jesus is God himself, the God who loves us, the God who is our friend. In, in our lesson today, it said Jesus and his disciples went to Caesarea Philippi. They had come from the town of Bethsaida on the Sea of, Ga Bethsaida, excuse me, on the sea of Galilee, where some people had brought a man to Jesus, a man who was blind, had been blind all his life. And Jesus gave him sight. This is how Jesus spent his days, going from town to town and healing people. The people, some of them had been sick, had been handicapped for years, doing amazing miracles. You remember how he fed 5,000 families with a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. <clears throat> people would bring those who were possessed by demons, and Jesus would just say a word, and the demons would leave them. Jesus even came to the house where a young person had died and raised that person back to life. Jesus was demonstrating, again, in all these things, not only his amazing power, but how he used his power. His, he used his power always to show love, to care for others. Because this is what a friend does. This is what our God does. He loves us. He takes care of us every day. Well, the crowds as they watched Jesus do these things, were amazed. And they often wanted to do more. In fact, one time they wanted to kidnap Jesus and make him their king to just keep giving them more and more food on these earth. But you see, they were still, unfortunately, confused about him. Because when Jesus did these nice things, they thought that maybe they were tricks. They thought that maybe he was just doing something nice temporarily, but he could only do so far. 
kind of like a magician that you might see doing some amazing thing. And they forgot that whenever there's a blessing in our life, it is a gift from the God of all goodness, the God who loves us and takes care of us. Well, it was their confusion that led Jesus to say what he did here in, in, in our lesson. Jesus said to the disciples, what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter answered, you are the Messiah. That's the one who had been promised to be the Savior. But Jesus warned them not to tell anyone about him because the people wouldn't understand. They had so many wrong ideas that they didn't get it just who he was. So he had to teach them by what he did and by what he said. And that's what he proceeded to do immediately in his next words. Jesus then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and then he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this. What amazing things Jesus is saying. This is Jesus who has just healed this blind man. Jesus who has healed many other people. Jesus who has raised people from the dead. And yet he is going to die. In fact, he's going to let these authorities arrest him, beat him, accuse him of things he hadn't done, and give up his life there as he was nailed to the cross. It was the very leaders of Israel, of all people, who would see that Jesus was condemned, as they would convince that crowd to shout out, crucify him. And then they'd convince the Roman governor, Pilate, to take note of this Jesus by having him sentenced to death. Why did this happen? Why was this necessary? Scripture says that Jesus came as the one who would suffer to pay for all of our sins. It was prophesied in, in our first lesson from Isaiah chapter 50. That was really words spoken by the Messiah, by Jesus. I offered my back to those who beat me. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. That was describing what Jesus himself actually went through on this earth. And Jesus did this again in order to take our place, to pay for all of our sins. Now, that's something to stop and think about. Because I think all people will admit we're not perfect. But when we think of that, we usually mean, I'm not perfect, but I'm certainly not like some of those bad people. I'm not going around murdering people, blowing up buildings. I'm not out there ruining people's re reputations each day. But we are hurting other people, maybe in smaller ways. We're hurting other people with the things we say and the things we don't say. So often it's because we feel insecure. And rather than focusing on my shortcomings, I focus on somebody else's shortcomings and maybe just explode that, make that seem so great how horrible that other person is in comparison to me. We are greedy. We are jealous. We don't honor authorities. We misuse God's name. You can run right through the Ten Commandments and see how we again and again violate what God has done, has said. And we therefore deserve his punishment. But... The Lord God still loves us. He had a plan. He got it started immediately after Adam and Eve sinned upon this earth. He promised that one of their descendants would come and undo the devil's work. He would come to be the savior of all of us. And so God came on this earth, was born as a real human being, lived a perfect life in our place, and then died to pay for all of our sins. He'd be rejected. He'd be killed, though he did absolutely nothing wrong. And on the third day, rise again to prove that he had paid for all of our sins. And that means that no matter what you may have done contrary to God's will, no matter how bad you may have been, it's all been paid for. And God looks upon you as if you were just as holy as Jesus Christ himself. And why did Jesus do this? Not because we deserve it, not that we could earn it, simply because he is the God of love, simply because this is what a friend does, taking care of those that he loves. Maybe you remember the, the picture that Albrecht Dürer made of the praying hands. I think we're going to put that up here, the picture. Uh, it's a famous picture. A lot of people used to have that in their house or even a plaque on the wall. There's a story about that that some say may not be true. It might be true. Albrecht Dürer, supposedly, was friends with a, another young man named Franz. And they both were aspiring to be artists. But they didn't have the money for both of them to go to college. 
So they made a deal. They said that they would take turns. One of them would go away to school to learn to be an artist, while the other one worked and supported him, sent money for him to go to school, and then they'd switch places. The other one would go to become an artist, while the first one then worked to support him. They drew straws, and Albrecht was the one who went off to school initially. He learned, he studied to become an artist, and actually became very famous there with many beautiful drawings that he made. But then he had promised to come back and to help his friend, to take turns. You see, Franz had been working in the mines for four years, supporting Albrecht as he was studying to become an artist. So Albrecht came home and said, OK, now we switch places. I will now go to work, and you, Franz, go off to study. But the problem was that Franz couldn't do that by that time. Franz, from working there in the mines, his hands had become all gnarled and hard. He couldn't grasp the, uh, the uh, items that he could use, the paintbrush, etc. He couldn't do anything like that anymore. But he still was happy that, that Albrecht had gone ahead and become a famous artist. So then Albrecht did what he could to show his thanks, to show his love for his friend. He asked Franz if he would become a model for artists, for Albrecht to draw a, 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 an illustration. And he said, all I need is your hands, your hands which are bent, your hands which are worn, your hands which have done all this work for these four years. And this became the model then for Albrecht Dürer to make that famous illustration that we call praying hands, a model for us to stop and pray to our Lord. This reminds us of what Jesus did. Jesus did not go to work in a mine in order to save us. Jesus came down to this earth and allowed himself to be arrested and killed, even though he'd done absolutely nothing wrong, in order to save us from our sin. Jesus' hands didn't just become bent and worn by hard work. His hands were actually nailed to a cross as he was executed to pay for the sins of the whole world. And why did he do this? Because he loves us because he is the best friend ever, and this is what friends do. And now Jesus says to us in our lesson today, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. And that's what we get to do today. We will deny ourselves and spend our lives serving other people, because in baptism, our sinful nature was put to death, and we were raised to a new life with Christ, with the power to actually live selflessly, to look out for others day after day. May we always trust in Jesus for our forgiveness, for our new life, for the certainty that we have a home prepared for us in heaven, and then live our lives every day saying thank you to him. He was the best friend possible. Now we can be a friend to him and a friend to all the people around us as we seek to serve him the way that he served us. God bless you as you follow him and serve others each day. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses our understanding guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We turn to page 9 in our service folder or look at the slides and we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Working us so that we believe and live the word we have heard today. 
Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and to all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Bless our land with peace and prosperity so that the gospel may be proclaimed to all. We thank you, Lord, for keeping safe the ancestors of many local people as they traveled from Germany to this country 190 years ago. We join the people of Genera in remembering your grace. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and opened the gates of heaven. Fill us with joy over every sinner who repents and comes to trust in you. Extend your healing power on those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Pour out your special blessings on Denny Putman, who is recovering from a successful surgery. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. Lift the eyes of the distressed to see your love. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please note the Friendship Registry on the back table is there. Um, we ask also that if you are worshiping with us online, um, to fill out the guest register on the description link. We'll now hear the Sanctus and the Agnus Dei by the choir.
Please stand for prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. We'll close our service today with In Christ Alone.
just about. <laughs> God's blessing to all of you. It's so great to gather together as God's people to sing out his praises. I hope this introduction to our new hymnal has been a joyful for you, shows you some of the resources that we'll be introducing in the next years to come. Thank you to our choir. Great to have them sing again. Thank you to our flautist uh, Jenna and our bass player Jess and our accompanist Connie. Thank you to all the people who work so hard to make this uh, service come together so well. Um, if you'd like some more, next week we're going to ha show a concert uh, of uh, Wells choirs singing anthems on different hymns. That'll be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and afterwards we're going to have a light dinner uh, provided all through our stewardship and worship board. So if you'd like to sign up for that, please sign up and back. Uh, we'll make sure we have plenty of sandwiches uh, and cookies for and chips for everybody there to, uh, next Sunday. Um, today, since you all did such a great job singing, we have cookies in the parlor too. How's that? So take a cookie with you or something like that or uh, spend a little time chatting with everybody if you would. This Saturday, the Board of Property has a workday schedule starting at 8 o'clock for uh, fixing up things, 8 in the morning, that is, for fixing up things around the, the church. If you uh, like to work outside, hopefully it won't be 50 degrees uh, on it by Saturday. It'll be a little bit warmer, we'll see. Uh, bring some work gloves and a rake, I think, is about what we'll need, and we'll get some work done around here, too. Again, God uh, bless each of us richly with the certainty of his love and the opportunities to sing out his praises. Um, we'll be introducing more about this hymnal in the, in the next months to come. Please greet everybody. We're not going to usher people out anymore. We're going to go back to not ushering out, so you can walk out as you will. I'll be standing in the back with Vicar. Uh, please greet everybody here as you leave and continue to show the love of Christ, the greatest friend that we have. God be with you.